All right. Hello, everyone. Hi, Krista. Hello, Tom. Hi, everybody. Um, so it was a good week. I felt like us. Um, wow. I've seen people post about like a weight lifted off. And there were so many moments during the inauguration where I felt myself getting choked up, whether it's through the music, through the speeches, through the hope that I saw and the beautiful diversity that was on display. Yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, the word you use is the word I felt, that's hope. I, I, was, I was working that day doing a training program with a school district that neighbors ours and uh, it was at lunch break, so I put it on. And, and luckily, you know, the uh, the, the uh, President Biden's speech was was happening, and I could feel this emotion coming up in me, and it was an emotion of hope. And the other, there's so many wonderful things that have been happening. Uh, one, uh, I am thrilled with the diversity of his cabinet. Uh, I've, I've got to believe, I'm not sure, but I've got to believe it's the most diverse cabinet in American history. And I'm thrilled about that. The other thing is, um, you know, I've, I've watched Joe Biden since he, he was a young man. He's 10 years older than I am. And um, I, I, I am choosing to believe he is a genuinely caring human being. And uh, so that's, those are some of my feelings. I agree. And I feel that I know people have different things that are important to them in politics. But for me and my core values, it's that you're a, from the heart, good person, good intentions, you treat people well. And I've heard of people, you know, oh, you know, they're not sure if he's remembering things. And I'm like, but his heart is on display. And I think he's coming from a good place. Yeah. And to me, that makes all of the difference. Yeah. And the, yeah. go ahead. The, the, uh, the idea of remembering things. Well, I, I don't remember things sometimes, you know, <laughs> any busy human being is not going to remember things. Agreed. He is surrounding himself with, with really brilliant people, brilliant and caring people. That's an important combination. It is. And, you know, in the research that I've been doing lately of leaders, everyone that I've talked to has lauded the people that they are surrounded by. Yes. They say it's all about surrounding yourself with people who have a similar mission and vision, but perhaps a different way of getting there or a different perspective on how to get there. And that I believe is the mark of a really courageous leader, having folks that will push back at you, that will challenge your thinking, that will challenge your direction and allowing that to happen. Not just a room full of yes, 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 yes. And I think that that reminds me of one of the reasons why throughout this work, I still remain committed to working with high school students and with mm -hmm. their young, adults and mostly through your company and, and the work that I have gotten an opportunity to do with you because I see in the every younger generation the hope that things can be different and that they can have a role in making that difference and that was no I, I can't find a better example right now than Miss Amanda Gorman yeah. and her poem uh, The Hill We Climb. I was stunned into silence. And as Jennifer Lopez said, I had goosies, <laughs> like goosebumps were coming out. And her tone and the words she chose and the way that she delivered them, you're the English teacher, so I'm going to let you dive into this, but uh, I was blown away. So I, you know, I started teaching high school English in the early 70s and I love language and I love writing. I love to speak it. I love to read it. And of all those genres, I love poetry the most. Uh, I love to write it. I, I, you know, I have my own. I have my favorite writers. You know, Mark Nepo is my favorite writer and poet at the moment. But when this young lady, I, I both read and listened to her poem. Uh, the first image I got was Maya Angelou. 
I, I, I heard the influence. So for me, I'm overjoyed with what she wrote. The, the message of unity, the message of courage, the message of upliftment, and then simultaneously the other skill set is to deliver all that. You know, someone can read a poem, but she delivered it. It was powerful, it was dramatic. The tone of her voice, the inflections, um, I really felt I was listening to a young and brilliant Maya Angelou. And I, I can't wait to see where this young lady evolves. Absolutely. And it reminded me of being a 22 year old. Well, I, at that point, I was actually teaching my first job. But I remember nervousness in front of a classroom oh, of high absolutely. school students. Yeah. I had a paper clip in my fingers that I would twit turn all the time. And it reminded me back that even as a 19 year old, 20 year old in college, I'm standing up and my hands are shaking, the paper shaking. She was so beautifully, it, it just flowed and it was just so powerful. And go ahead. There's the word flow. So again, we, we, love, we love the work of Brene Brown. Uh, we love positive psychology. Uh, earlier, earlier, uh, Mihai Ching sent Mihai, uh, his theories around flow or being in the zone, being in the moment. You see, when, when these forces come together, here's a young lady, clear passion, enthusiasm for what she loves. Also, the discipline and the crafting of her art. When those things come together, you are in that moment, you're in the flow. So time doesn't exist. Fear doesn't exist. You are, you, this, this is the, the it's, it's, the, um, it's Maslow's peak experience. It's the top of the pyramid. That's, and, and, and there's nothing else to do but fall in love with that because we feel it. I love, and I had not thought about that before, that when you're in the flow, there is no fear. Nope. And I need to go back and to think about that, my times of flow. And so for those of you who are watching, I'd love for you to reflect on where is your flow? What, what takes you into your flow? Yep. And you let everything else fall off to the wayside. And I know that PBS came out with a lesson plan to be able to expose Amanda Gorman to all students, even those who weren't able to watch. And I'm looking over her lyrics and some of them just were so powerful and resonated with me. And I just highlighted a couple parts here. And, oh geez, I am not gonna speak it justice. Um, we've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And I'm like, whoosh. Yeah. I need to sit, I need to do some deep, thinking and reflection on that. And I haven't done it yet. So there, there's an important thought recommendation to all of our friends who are listening and to all of our friends who have the incredible power and privilege to pass this on to their students. Reflect, take a long breath, really listen to that poem and read that poem. And I would say, if I were teaching, where are you in that poem? Where are you? Where are you in this past year in that poem? Uh, where are you as the poem evolves and travels and grows? And how have you evolved and traveled and grown over this past year? The other part, as I keep going back, all seems to fall together where she acknowledges where we've been, the hurt, the heartache, she validates the human experience in our country and then shifts and moves us forward from that we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. That it's not what stands between us, but what stands before us. And I think that validation it was so needed on a national level for us. And then to see, we don't have to stay here. The idea of validation and acknowledgement, 
So we all know, and our science teachers could teach us better than both of us, there is an ebb and flow of life. There is an ebb and flow of everything. And when we pay attention to that, and I, I literally mean pay attention. When we pay attention to something that is prominent in our lives right, right now, not avoid it, not try to dull the pain, but really focus and give our attention, it does nothing but dissipate. It, can, it must dissipate when we give our full attention. And as, you know, as, as our mindfulness teachers and friends would say, we breathe into that. Or as, um, I forget her name, brilliant uh, woman author, lean into it. You know, you lean into the discomfort. When you lean into the discomfort, it, it starts to dissipate. The, the, it, anything that we resist will persist. So it does, what, what Amanda Gorman is telling us is lean in, be fully there and know America is not done. And, and being the historian that you are, boy, we, we've got a long way to go and that's okay. It is. It's okay. We can all participate in that. It's like um, achievement. We don't need to be at a certain place, but we need to keep growing. Yes. yes. <laughs> and the last part is something I know you and I've talked about. She ends with, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Yes. There is, that's courage. Be it, be it. Um, I've always thought that if you wanna help a child change their behavior, you must be the behavior you want to see in the child. You know, I, um, I think it was Emerson said some variation of uh, who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. So we uh, here again, here we are as, as we close up, our job is to be a role model, not to be perfect, not to be perfect, but to be real. So thank you friends for tuning in. Uh, we look forward as always to seeing your responses, your thoughts, and we will be back again next week. Until Thanks Krista. Thank you, be the light everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.